So welcome to all of you on Facebook. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, my friends. As you know, we are now uh, coffee. And this is my Turkish mug. Coffee with Father Tom and friends, rather than just coffee with Father Tom. And the friends joining today are Father John Crean, retired Episcopal priest, uh, living out in the desert at La Quinta. And let me see here. Uh, La Quinta is right now 93 degrees and going up to a high of 108. So compared with last week, they're having a bit of a cold spell. Yes, it's semi-Arctic. Yes. And then <laughs> uh, Jan Poss is living in Claremont. And the temperature, according to uh, the infallible um, <laughs> internet, is mostly sunny at 79. And you're going up to 88 today. Mm. Yep. And I am in Redondo Beach, where we had about a half hour's worth of rain this morning. Mm. Oh, wow. And it is right now, uh, I don't want to inspire too much envy or anything, but right now it's about 68 degrees. Yeah. going up to a high of 73. Wow. Wow. And it is overcast with a few patches of blue beginning to show themselves. And uh, the ground is beginning to dry from the nice little rain that we had uh, oh, about an hour ago. In fact, there was even some thunder in the distance. Really? Nice. Nice. So. So anyway, it looks like it is the three of us uh, live on Facebook now, and we have eight people who have joined us on Facebook. So uh, wonderful. Welcome to all eight of you. We were chatting, the three of us, about a couple of things um, earlier, uh, which may be something to get into as we, um, as, as we move along. But uh, Susan Brunasso is not with us. I hope she can make it at some point, but at any rate, uh, uh, she's the one who usually reminds me that we need to pray. <laughs> so <laughs> let us pray. Oh God, you are full of surprises. Some of them, and for some of us, many of them are welcome and what St. Ignatius would call consolations. And other surprises are, humanly we would classify them as unwelcome, but they are certainly challenges. St. Ignatius would probably say desolations. Mm. So wherever we are in our own personal spiritual journey, our own journey in relationship to you, and gratefully, perhaps trying to be grateful, uh, counting our blessings, sometimes needing to pray to endure our blessings, but we turn to you confidently with the realization that your grace is sufficient for us, with the realization that you do not abandon the work that you, the eternal God, have begun in time. And so we simply turn to you with all the confidence that we can muster and ask you for a deepening of the grace of faith to lead us to understanding, to lead us to acceptance of your hand in our lives and the grace of hope 
to base our lives on that faith, confident that you fulfill the work that you have begun in us. And for the charity, the love, the power to continue to be faithful in even in face of challenges and difficulties, to continue to be faithful to the work you have called us to, sometimes surprisingly, in whatever the area, the situation of our lives may be at this time. So confident of your grace, O oh Lord, we are confident of your blessing on the session that we will have together and that all things are grace, that you can be found in all things and through all things. And echoing Julian, that all will be well. And so we make our prayer as we glory in the name Christian. We make our prayer as always through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So, Jan, you had a question. We were talking, we were reminiscing about uh, ecumenical stuff, and that got us into um, uh, spiritual direction and the fact that my current spiritual director is uh, uh, Father Jack Steger of the, of the Cardinal Manning House of Prayer up in the Los Feliz area. And Father John um, said that he, his spiritual director is the associate of Father Jack. Um, Father Chris Cartwright, a Jesuit. Jack is a uh, diocesan priest. But prior to that, my spiritual director was John McAnulty, Father John McAnulty, who was also, uh, was also a Jesuit and who came to establish that house of prayer in the 1970s. Now, Jan, you had a question about that. Well, I wanted to know a little bit of the history about it and what it is and why it was formed and, you know, through all this, I know that um, you had talked about the building behind, which is or was part of the IHMs. And I think you know that I'm the coordinator for the for the ex IHMs oh. out here in Claremont for the Pat Reef lecture. So, you know, there are always these connections. So I'm just curious about that history since, you know, I'm not a priest, so I wouldn't know why or how that came about and, and why it's there. Okay, I can, uh, I can fill in a lot of the history uh, for one thing, I'm not too sure that there's any such thing as an ex-IHM. <laughs> no, no, maybe in, not. <laughs> well said. Well in, 19, said. In, 19, in 1968, when the um, <clears throat> very, very large, very vibrant uh, uh, Immaculate Heart Sisters, their community, who staffed many schools, at least a hospital or two, and had a lot of professional works. Uh, you know, one of the most famous probably being, um, uh, why can't I think of her name now? The artist. Oh, oh Corita Kent. 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 Corita Kent, Kent. Yeah. yeah. And actually her sister, Ruth, was <clears throat> the librarian at uh, St. John Seminary. Oh. Uh, so in the dispute with Cardinal McIntyre, which was probably more, more personality than ideological, even though the ideological component was there, um, they simply butted heads. And uh, uh, McIntyre, of course, had the power to simply uh, 
deny them any canonical status. Well, they split into at least three groups, one being the ones who wanted to maintain the, a, a semblance of the traditional life and a semblance of uh, canonical status. So the very uh, relatively small minority of them maintained canonical status as IHMs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think two of them are still alive. One of them is at, uh, at um, Nazareth House uh, and the other, I, I'm not sure where she is, but there's only two left. Mm -hmm. And they lost their property uh, after the split uh, the canonical ones were given, I think, that property which the archdiocese owned. It was the uh, Donahue mansion. Uh, and he was a papal knight and big supporter and all of that of the of, of the of the archdiocese. So they were given that or sold it or whatever. But anyway, they had had possession of it for their novitiate. Uh, the larger group uh, formed the Immaculate Heart community, which was considered to be renegades uh, during the uh, McIntyre time and were very, very much reconciled uh, by Manning and supported then later by, uh, by Mahoney. But a lot of them moved out two by two to the Claremont area mm. because they had, and, and you know, there were at least at least a half a dozen pairs of um, the Immaculate Heart community members mm. uh, that I was very closely associated with uh, when I was pastor at Claremont. You know, mm. bit by bit, by bit, by bit, right. they died. Mm -hmm. um, but there are still some, I think, who are who are with us. Mm -hmm. um, that one of the tragedies of this, and I know I'm I'm answering your question in a roundabout way, but this is very relevant to you, Chan. One of the tragedies of this is that the Immaculate Heart Sisters owned property in Claremont, mm. where uh, the intention was to build the new campus of Immaculate Heart College mm. and become oh. part of the Claremont Colleges, the Claremont- That would have been great, yeah. Wow. That would have been absolutely great. It would great. have been fabulous, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I mean, Pat Reef, it was, you know, she went yeah. to Pilgrim Place when she got a sick right. from what I understand. And mm -hmm. my advisor when I was at Claremont was that she and Pat developed women's studies, the first women's studies classes together uh -huh. Uh -huh. At, at Claremont. So uh -huh. I'm sure that Karen was probably very much instrumental in, I, you know, that's part of the story I didn't know. Yeah, well, that, that was very much underway when the tragedy happened. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, the, the campus, the property that they had, and I don't know exactly how it got transferred or whatever, Mm. But it is now the uh, Barnard uh, uh, Field Center across across Foothill Boulevard from the uh, uh, from the main campuses next to the Claremont School of Theology. Who whom does it belong? I presume it belongs to the um, college's consortium. Mm. Is it is it the is it, it's not that. the garden, is it? Is no, it? it's not the gardens. It, it's, it's fenced off. It's, it's basically, I think, an experimental return. OptumRx. Okay, I'm not <laughs> gonna take that one. Um, it's, it's a, it, it's a uh, computer call anyway. Uh, uh, I, I, but, but, yeah, th you know, there's been talk of building stuff, but there's a lot of community uh, activity and voices now who are, are saying, well, it's got to be preserved in a wild state 
-hmm. in perpetuity. And they're, mm -hmm. I think they're doing a lot of research there in conjunction with the uh, uh, botanical gardens, uh, you know, research on restoring, getting rid of uh, non-native species right. and restoring uh, native habitat. Yeah. Well, but you know, it's interesting that the IHNs were so progressive and so yeah. with it and so much in the spirit of Vatican II, truly, truly living it out and in a real realistic way that yeah. that's, that was, a, 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 I could understand why that would be the most progressive step possible yeah. to connect yeah. educationally, academically with Claremont. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would, yeah. I mean, that would have been an, an absolutely dynamic powerhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it just a tragedy, really, that, that uh, and, and I don't know. Um, I don't know who, I, you know, there's maybe something about that in in uh, Anita Casper's book. I really don't know. But yeah, I'm, I haven't read the book all the way through, so I'm not sure. But that land now was recently, if I'm, you know, I'd have to remember there was a, there was a, um, a celebration or, you know, a handoff of that that was, I believe now, if I'm not mistaken, that Robert Redford did something to preserve that land as well, because it is, I mean, the land we're on is part of the Tongva nation. So that there's right. a large, cons you know, consortium of people at Claremont that are trying to protect and write right. the history of that as well for Claremont. Right. And actually there's, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, Nancy Minty next week will talk a little bit about that too, because uh, their uncommon good uh, building mm. are, are, how would I say, attracting interest for their earthy construction, as well as uh, you know the recognition that they are on uh, Tongva sacred mm. land. So, but to get back, you know. <laughs> get back to the um, house, of Prince house of prayer uh, that, yeah, became the, that became the uh, novitiate for the, and the mother house for the um, IHM sisters as distinct from the IHM community so Tom you mean that whole big building up north of where the house of prayer is now that was inhabited by the the nuns who stayed faithful to the the old order is that it you got it. Okay. Yeah, okay. And that was about 30, as I recall, from uh, I saw that Rebel Hearts uh, movie the other night. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I think that we, they said it was about 30 that re retained the wanted to go with the yeah. old. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Rebel Hearts. I haven't seen that or heard of it. Oh, that's oh you marvelous. have to. Yeah, it is. You have to see it. I saw it at, you know, through the Sundance Festival when it first came out because of my connections. And yeah, it's it's a piece of history, but you know, there's such um, controversy around. You know what I've heard was it 300 that left? Was it 500 that left? Was it 600? I mean, there's so many, but it was in the hundreds that broke away, from my understanding, wow. in the community. So, yeah, they said 375 broke away, and about 25 or 30, something like that, retained the 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 old right. habit, etc. Yeah. Right. And, then of, course, and then of course, they quickly modified their habit. Yeah. Well, right. the, the, oh, yeah. The, the, yeah. the interesting thing is, uh, within the year or two after that break, uh, other religious orders, communities of women, managed to uh, get the same things that they were fighting for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just they were trailblazers. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, and I'm not from here originally, so, and then I wasn't in the church for 20 years, so I really wasn't paying that much wow. attention to all that. So, at any rate, when John McAnulty, who uh, in 1975 and 76 was studying spirituality in Rome, I mean, he had basically retired from a lot of other jobs for the Jesuits in California. He, uh, he, uh, had agreed, I had talked to uh, Cardinal Manning about uh, 
the idea of establishing a house dedicated simply to supporting priests in their spirituality and in their commitment to their priestly vocation. And of course, that was something that Manning absolutely had to agree with. And, you know, those were the times when some of the priests' problems were beginning to surface. Vatican II had been blamed for a lot of the problems that simply Vatican II, I think, surfaced that were very, very much underground. Right. Oh, and, and by way of uh, a footnote, I, I personally believe that the whole um, situation of uh, sexual abuse of minors has been going on for centuries. Yeah. Probably with every bit as much intensity as has been revealed in the last 20 years. But, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so much underground, so much hidden and all of that. And uh, yeah, so <clears throat> much that was repressed, hidden, and all of that came to the surface after Vatican II. And then, of mm. course, people blame Vatican II for having, uh, having caused it rather than provided the environment in which it could be revealed and brought to light. Mm. But that's another question for another time. Mm -hmm. uh, so John McAnulty basically came to Los Angeles with the support the verbal support and a bit of money and the uh, the arrangement that this house of prayer would be <clears throat> the old movie theater, private movie theater that uh, Earl C. Anthony built for screening of, with his friends, screening of, of movies. And so with that, and John, you're probably familiar with the old building yeah. uh, apart from the newer section. Yeah, the McEnulty house, yeah. Yeah, that's all there was. Yeah. And he had, he, he was able to build um, four, maybe five bedrooms into there, plus his own quarters upstairs, and a small chapel, and then the meeting room in the in, 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 in the center. Yeah. Uh, and that was it. And he had to kind of manage his own uh, relations with the sisters who had their own interests. And of course, John had his own interests uh, in you know, the, the sisters basically wanted to keep their own identity as a novitiate, as the headquarters, the mother house, and eventually made it into a retreat house. Mm -hmm. And as part of the retreat center, they did build a new building with a dozen or so uh, bedrooms, maybe more. Well, to make a longer story short, once... Uh, once Cardinal Mahoney came on, he said, you know, we've really got to develop this place. So that's when the newer section was built. Uh, that's when more of a staff was added, mm. where a house for the uh, director and associate director was purchased right next door. Mm. So, um, and you're, you may be aware that the, the, the house on the uh, east side of that property was the uh, La Bianca house, where the oh, famous wow. oh, really? the, the Tate La Bianca murders happened. Wow. Yeah. It, it, that took place there? Yeah. Oh, wow. my God. Right next door. Oh. Where, where is that, Tom? As you go up the hill, you know, you go through the, 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 the gate there, and you, you turn up. Well, it's just a little further up the hill. Well, it's uh, on the left. If you go up the hill, you have the the, the massive um, former no, no, uh, up up um, up up the public street. 
Okay. Before you get to uh, okay the, when when you get to the gate. Right. You you continue going up that street and it's the first residential house. Oh, good lord. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm, this is so much history. So yeah. the idea of it is now you know it's it's a retreat place where priests can come for their own personal private retreat. Um, John uh, arranges for, John Steger arranges for uh, uh, maybe eight, 10, 12, pre-COVID, um, uh, four day long retreats directed, uh, yeah, directed retreats basically with somebody coming in as a retreat director. John will do a few of them. Uh, Chris does some uh, others. In fact, one of the most memorable retreats that I had up there was uh, with Father uh, Bill Steger, who was Jack's older brother. Jesuit. Jesuit, who was the uh, uh, one of the staff, one of the very noted staff of the Vatican Observatory. Oh, wow. And a very noted uh, astrophysicist along with uh, being a scholar of the interface of science and religion. Wow. And it was a, it was a fabulous experience to be, uh, you know, to be with him in the, uh, for four days on a retreat that he was directing. He since died I don't know, four or five years ago, I think, of a very aggressive prostate cancer. Mm. So um, with what's happening with my need for radiation treatment, I've got my fingers crossed that it, that it gets it while it is still indolent. I'm learning a little terminology here <laughs> about what they use. So in a nutshell, it's a place for a priest to come for spiritual nourishment, spiritual refreshment. And I, I can really thank Father John McAnulty for probably in some ways, if not saving my vocation, at least saving my peace <laughs> within my vocation because that's a hard thing to maintain. Uh, and it's, uh, and I think he, he helped a lot of priests through a lot of difficult times as the Clem Connolly, who was the uh, homilist yeah. at his funeral mass. Mm. Um, one, of the, one of the striking statements that he made was that the gift of John McAnulty was that he was able to reconcile us priests to our own goodness. Nice. Mm. Nicely put. Mm. Yeah. You know, Clem, Clem Connolly was on the uh, on that film, The uh, Rebel Hearts. He spoken mm -hmm. several times mm -hmm. because he knew the history of that time keenly as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I have uh, the, the Episcopal um, uh, rector in um, in South Pasadena, and here great friends. And, uh -huh. uh, so uh, I have yet to meet him, but he's the, uh -huh. he's a real hero, I think. Yeah, he is. He's he's marvelous. So that's kind of the history of the priest's house of prayer. So uh, prior to COVID, I would go up there once a month for my own spiritual direction and every year, uh, most every year, uh, arrange for a retreat there. And uh, now I've been getting spiritual direction by, uh, by FaceTime. So, uh, so it's an opportunity for diocesan priests to get away from the hubbub of uh, the demands of parish life, particularly with a reduced uh, uh, clericus, uh, they have to do so much more. Oftentimes, two point, three point parishes. Right. And the, right. The, the 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 thing is to get away from all that. You can't. You certainly can't. Uh, at least right. my experience is you can't have spiritual time. You know, at your own parish. I mean, you and have here to... comes Susan. Hello, Susan. With 
a ring light shining in yeah. her dark glasses. It's a virtual halo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 can you see your, your, your own image? I mean, the thing that is absolutely striking is the fact that the ring, no, that the ring light is, uh, is dominating the lenses of your glasses. Oh. Oh, I think that's fine. That's some kind of a... <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Um, welcome, Susan. Thank you. Sorry for my tardiness. I needed to run an errand unexpectedly first thing this morning. Yeah, well, those things happen. Definitely. Uh, and you are coming on us just about the time. We're probably trying to uh, uh, wrap it up. A little bit. We have been talking, Susan, about uh, uh, the priest's house of prayer and something of the history of that. Uh, uh, one of the things that I did point out that you may be interested in was that the Immaculate Heart Sisters, prior to their um, prior to the tragic breakup uh, in 1968. Uh, had fairly firm plans to move the Immaculate Heart College campus to Claremont. Oh, oh. Uh, ask around a little bit about that. Uh, I will, I will, definitely. Yeah. I'll ask Karen, because I'm sure she knows. Yeah, and it's the, uh, uh, the campus, they, the, 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 I understand they had the property, is now what's the Barnard uh, Field Center adjacent to the School of Theology. Wow. On the north side of Foothill, yeah. which is still vacant or dedicated property, okay. shall we say, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. And we were going to begin to talk about uh, some future plans and future episodes. Um, and we have, of course, Nancy Minty, coming on next week, and uh, we can all uh, prepare ourselves. Um, I will put in the, uh, in the notes and the comments uh, the um, resources to learn who Nancy Minty is um, for anybody who wants to follow. Uh, and what um, uh, you know, I'm hoping that we can kind of get into her own spiritual journey and her own, you know, what it is that continues to support and sustain her in this uh, very difficult ministry, really, of very creatively being present for, for the poor. And uh, Father John was then uh, suggesting possibly after that to have a session in which he would talk a little bit about the Episcopal Church and its relation to the C Catholic Church, uh, the Roman Church, and how, um, how he sees that. And so I think we've got a, a, we've, we've got a, a, a few possibly very interesting sessions coming up. And Father Tom, on the uh, the twenty seventh would be the the next Sunday after Nancy's on Earth Day. I mean next uh, Tuesday. I can't do it on the twenty seventh. I have family here. But if you want to schedule me in for the following one, uh, okay, that would be better. That would be in uh, August sometime, I guess. Or I mean, whatever. I'm bad on mathematics. Let me look at the calendar here. Okay. Uh, the twenty twenty seventh is. I've got family here. But then August um, uh, August third uh, would work. That would be the next one, I think, if my calculations okay. are correct. Let's, uh... I'll leave that up to you guys who figure out the scheduling. Okay. Well, Father John, you have yes. family visiting over during a time that's very. Uh, whether comfortable in your area, you have family going over during a very comfortable time in your area. It depends on how you define comfortable. 
I mean, out here, it's like, you know, it's a sort of a prelude to hell, you know, I mean, in terms of, you know, it's, it's pre-hell or, or it's preparation for purgatory, perhaps. Uh, but no, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, we, we steer around the, you know, we're in the desert here. In yeah, Lucky well, Seven. you know, actually, you're having a cold spell out there. It's, it's 95 yeah. degrees right That's now. Right. That's right. We're going up to 100 and only 108. That's quasi Arctic. Yeah, and I my brother lives in Pahrump, Nevada, and it was 117 there the other day, and it was 130 in Death Valley. Yes, I know. I saw the. I look at the Death you Valley thing because I have a son who's an ardent bicyclist, and he uh, he uh, cycled through Death Valley at some point. So I track that. He doesn't do it around this time of year, though. Wow, unbelievable. So with that, it is 9.37. And so shall we uh, call it a day, a morning for our Facebook uh, people. We still have seven people with us. And of course, more will uh, be watching as the day goes on. And God bless you all. And I'm so happy that you are here. And Susan has her hand up. Just a reminder for everyone to consider donating blood the uh, lead level is, is dangerously low right now. So if your loved one were to end up in the hospital, there would be a scramble to get a pint of blood. Mm. Uh, if you can, please consider donating blood and, uh, and please consider getting vaccinated if you haven't already gotten your vaccine. Just needed to do a quick little plug there. Thank you, Father Tom. Okay. and I. I definitely echo both of those, but particularly the uh, the blood donation. Also, I have been a uh, uh, almost lifetime, um, five times a year oh. um, donor. Wow! And uh, uh, now I'm really not able to. I, about five years ago, I did have some kind of a. Um, uh, an anemia that they never did get a, a handle on as to what the cause of it is. But as of now, I've kind of figured that it's it's time to pass the torch. So um, anybody who is watching this and is of any, any interest, please uh, uh, carry on for me in the blood donation angle and uh, carry on with Susan. Are you still getting platelets? Not as often as I would like. That, that stretch of time since I'm a double platelet donor, it is a four to five hour stretch of time. Basically it's the whole day that gets wiped out when I donate. So I haven't scheduled it with Your Hope or um, uh, Red Cross in a while, but there is a blood drive this Friday. Um, Presbyterian Church in Claremont on Mountain. So just, uh, again, a shout out to where the local um, blood drive is taking place on Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Well, shall we finish with a prayer? Father John, would you like to lead us in a concluding prayer? Be happy to. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. With your spirit. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We thank you for the technology which makes our meeting possible and for the participation of all those, particularly Father Tom, who founded this, which makes it possible in a time of pandemic and continuing into hopefully a time of health and recovery for us to come together to share our thoughts to praise your name and to remind one another that God loves us and that we are to love one another through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 So goodbye to all of you who are on Facebook. And uh, uh, next week we have as our guest, Nancy Minty, uh, who will, um, she says, basically ask anything you want. So. We are not a shy group, and uh, I think it will be a fascinating, uh, a fascinating visit. So God bless you all. Look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye-bye now.
Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bless you.